Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is June 22nd, 2017. Taking a look at our current solar conditions, the solar wind speed is sitting right now at 797.5 kilometers per second with a 2.2 density. So that coronal hole that we have been monitoring for the past couple days, we are finally feeling the effects from those solar winds. Taking a look at sunspot regions, we have three of them, AR2664, AR2663, and AR2662. AR2664 is the newly arrival as 2662 and 2663 are now making their exit. None of these sunspots are a threat for any kind of solar flare action. Taking a look at the KP indices, right now the KP indice is sitting at one and the 24 hour max was at three, so not quite storm level, but close. Checking out the SDO, we take a look at the coronal hole situation. Again, in the northern regions, we're monitoring the same coronal hole as is now. It is turning away from Earth with another one that has formed that should be Earth-facing as early as this evening and possibly feeling the effects from that solar wind as early as June 24th, June 25th. And quickly, I'd like to give an update on Tropical Storm Cindy. She has made landfall. Already in the Gulf region, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, some of those spots have already seen 10 plus inches of rain with another two to three inches possible today. Storms will move up inland and through the Tennessee Valley, so we'll keep an eye on that. Thanks for that update, Jake. Hey guys, it's Mari. Check out these sprites, jellyfish sprites over Europe. This is on spaceweather.com. On June 20th, a thunderstorm in Austria unleashed a spectacular display of lightning. Observers on the ground witnessed blinding flashes of crackling light. The most amazing aspect of this outburst, however, was found high above the clouds, 80 kilometers high to be exact, in the realm of the sprites. Martin Popek photographed the display from his private observatory more than 500 kilometers away from the storm. Such distances are ideal for seeing above the tops of towering thunderclouds. Oscar Vandervelde of the Technical University of Catalonia, Spain explains, Jellyfish sprite events like these are produced by very impulsive cloud-to-ground lightning flashes draining positive charge from the stratiform rain region in large thunderstorms. The tops of the sprites were surrounded by a saucer-like halo of light. The halo is evidence of intense electrical fields at 80 to 90 kilometers, shaking up the electrons, colliding with nitrogen to produce light for such a short time that the sprite streamers cannot form. At lower altitudes, the field exists longer, allowing jellyfish sprite streamers to glow from electron avalanches. Although sprites have been seen for at least a century, most scientists did not believe they existed until after 1989 when sprites were photographed by cameras on board the space shuttle. Now, sprite chasers routinely photograph sprites from their own homes. Popek used a Watek 910HX security camera with UFO capture software to catch his sprites. I'll put the link below if you want to test out that software. Also, I'd like to mention uh, Jake's solar update earlier in the video. That was pre-recorded earlier this morning about 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. The solar winds were significantly higher then. They've now dropped down to 334.4 kilometers per second. We're going to have a live hangout tonight. Please join us. Uh, we will have Lee on along with Jake. Uh, they're going to be discussing the solar winds. They're going to talk about UV rays and maybe discuss the earthquake and the solar winds possible effect on the earth. Lots of neat stuff coming up. Join us live tonight at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll go ahead and uh, post links in the description. We look forward to seeing you guys there. Have a great day. Talk soon.